Hello and welcome to Veritas, where we speak truth as a way of life. My name is Jessica Lubianski, and I am joined today by Mr. George Kampa. I'm so glad that you are here today. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? You're involved in an organization within our Archdiocese, correct? Yes, I'm involved in several young adult organizations here in San Antonio and youth organizations as well. Um, to name a few, um, the Young Adult Initiative, which is responsible for organizing worship on the river, um, involved at St. Matthew's with the Young Adults, YC3, uh, used to be involved in YCP, so the list goes on and on, but um, I think at the heart of it was just my incredible calling to serve and uh, to give back to the youth and other young adults. So thank you for having me here, Jessica. Yes, and that relational ministry aspect is always, well, I feel like it draws us in and draws us to want to do more and to serve more. And sometimes when we're caught up, you know, in this want to do, want to have, and we are, you know, in relational ministry with one another, sometimes we even become very prideful and envious of what others are doing. Oh, yes. And I think that's such, you know, a hot topic just for any age level from very young to very old. Yeah. You know, we always want more. There's that old saying, like, keeping up with the Joneses. I've never personally seen the show that it comes off of, but yeah. we know the concept of it, of that we see things on social media and sometimes we just want what others want. We see someone doing good, and we ourselves want to do and have what they want. So we're going to dive into this topic today, right? Yes, we are. So I'm excited to share with uh, you all about the topics of pride and envy. And as Jessica alluded to, there is this interesting uh, phenomenon that occurs that when we see other people doing good, or when they have something good, we become jealous and we become envious and and then our pride kind of that opens the doors for our pride to get in the way and to kind of ruin the good that we've done um so to begin with let's uh i guess define what pride is pride is an exaggerated self-esteem as i would like to say simply put it's just thinking that we are better that we are more deserving that we may be even higher than other people and that is very unfortunate because inwardly when we view the world it allows us or it traps us into thinking that it's us and them right we stop seeing each other as brothers and sisters and ultimately the result of pride is that we do not want to serve and that is a terrible thing because we as you said relationship relational um, ministry is all about service um, so then the, the other feeling, the other um, topic is envy. And envy is this painful desire to want something that your neighbor has, right? And, and it's coupled with a resentment of that neighbor because they have what they have. And it's a, it's a very powerful feeling that is uh, embedded in us, but um, when we have it unchecked, it can quickly ruin everything that we have because we start looking beyond the blessings that are right in front of our faces. Everything that God has blessed us with, given us, and is continuing to give to us, we look past that and we look at what he's doing to other people, what he's giving to other people, and we become envious. We become, uh, we have this painful desire. That's what I asked for. Why am I not getting it? Right? So that then the result is that we just forget everything that we have. So that's those are two very sinister, ugly sins or emotions that become sin very quickly. And I don't know a person in the world that hasn't experienced those sins. And there's something beautiful in that, that we all, we're all sinners and we always have this opportunity to reconcile with our God. Yes, and that's the beautiful thing that uh, is kind of the safety net uh, of, from God is that we can reconcile. Um, but before we get there, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, an example of two, or I guess three examples of who embodies pride and envy, and then the opposite of pride and envy, which are generosity and gratitude. 
and humility and service. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So before we get, let me just show everyone a picture. Um, here's St. Michael and Lucifer. And I want to begin by uh, starting from the beginning of Genesis 1, verse 3. Uh, God created, God said, let there be light, and light just came out of nowhere, right? And God saw that the light was good, and he then separated the light from the darkness. And that was day one. Right, but in order for us to fully um, understand what Genesis 1 is speaking about, we then need to go to the end of the Bible in Revelations in chapter 12. And we have this incredible uh, supernatural story of the red dragon and the pregnant woman, where this woman is fleeing from the red dragon because the red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems or crowns um, is trying to engulf. Uh, the child that she's going to birth, and once she gives birth, um, then there's this epic battle in heaven that occurs, and it's the angels fighting against each other. And there are two main players, there's of course Lucifer, and then there's Michael. And Lucifer fell to those two feelings, those emotions, sins of pride and envy. Um, at the beginning, God, it's believed that God gave him a test. And what he did is that he revealed to the angels his mystery of the incarnate word. And the angels had to, to decide, just like how we have to decide in our everyday, everyday life if we're going to follow God um, and enact his will. And Lucifer, who is one of the greatest angels, if not the greatest, the most powerful, the most beautiful angel, could not accept the incarnate word. He could not understand why God himself would become man to save man, right? He didn't even understand why uh, God would even create man to begin with, right? So now we're starting to see uh, the signs of envy, right? He is envious that in this new plan that God just revealed, that he's no longer going to be at the center of God's love. Instead, somebody else is going to be. Someone who is lesser, someone who is inferior, someone who doesn't deserve it. Right? And so remember our definitions of envy is that if we, and pride is that we think that we're better. And that's exactly what uh, Lucifer felt. Um, and then his pride act, uh, caused him to rebel. I will not follow. So there's that consequence of pride, which is the lack of service. And then there's the, the, the hero in the story. St. Michael comes and he yells out, Mikael, who is like God? And that's a question, right? Mm -hmm. Who are you to say that you're better than God? Who are you to refuse his glory and his plan for humanity, right? He who has blessed you, he who has gifted you with being the highest angel in all of the choirs, why? And then that's where God recognized, acknowledged Michael's proclamation. His proclamation of, I am yours, Lord. I will do your will. I will succumb to your plan. And I will serve your people. Right? And then the, the galactic battle of angels occurred. And one third of them were swept from the heavens. Right? And fell on earth. And that's the embodiment of what pride and envy can do, is that it can really kick us out of God's grace, it can kick us out of his heaven, it can kick us out of his promise of salvation. Um, but unlike Lucifer, St. Michael trusted, St. Michael humbled himself, offered his gratitude, offered his, his service, and, and did the will of God, right? And then we also have another incredible, incredible role model uh, in the Blessed Mother. Um, she not only uh, was the embodiment of humility, everything that she did was so humble and gracious and beautiful, right? From her fiat, from her yes, that continued for the rest of her life. Not only did she give up her life to God's plan that to her at the moment was unknown, right? Here's a, a tiny little teen, a child herself, giving birth to a child that's going to be the king of kings, right? And she was also told that you're going to suffer, right? And she just said, I accept. I accept, I acknowledge, I will suffer, 
but you promised that I would try on. And that is an incredible sign of humility and of service because she also not only gave up her life, but she also gave up her son's life. Because she didn't pray to God asking for him to change his mind. You mean she wasn't sitting there like, let me be the one. You don't think she was doing that? No. <laughs> no, she was not. So these two important figures uh, that the church pays so much reverence to, there's a reason why we pay reverence to them because of their embodiment of their virtue of generosity, uh, and of humility. So, yeah, that that's a quick story of, of yeah. the role models to have for those two virtues. And probably one of the reasons that we fall so much to the pride and to envy is just like Lucifer. He's the one that's often tempting us. And so why would he not tempt us with the very thing yeah. that caused him to fall? Yes, exactly. And our poor little hearts were weak. We are weak, but I love how you give us hope through generosity mm -hmm. and talking about, you know, our blessings and that we have these incredible people in heaven that are, you know, ultimately praying for us yes. and helping us so that we can always draw closer to God. Oh, yes. Though we may be weak, we're not alone. And that's the, the incredible mystery of salvation is that we have our great angels. Right? We have angels that are fighting for us. We have Mary on our side. And of course, we have the blood that was shed for us from our Christ, our Lord. So, And that was so that we could be reconciled to him ultimately, mm -hmm. right? So that exactly. though we are sinners and we are weak, through him we are strong. And so I thank you for sharing that because no I problem. think it's a great just little reflection for us. And, you know, I always love to give our viewers some type of challenge. And so you were telling me you had an idea for this yes. challenge for the week. Can you tell me a little bit about yes. that? Yes, so I'll put it in context. Um, I don't think there's anybody out there nowadays that does not have a social media account or a platform or whatever they may use. Um, and social media, I think, is now our trap nowadays that we can easily fall into the sins of pride and envy. Um, I think. Uh, we can all relate to the statements that I'm probably going to make right now is when we look at somebody it's like Why do they have that vacation? Why are they in that beautiful house? Why do they have that car? Right and we kind of look it back and start mulling over it and it says what did I do wrong? Right. Why has God not blessed me? Why am I not deserving? Right. What, I'm deserving of those blessings too. And so we can quickly fall into this snowballing effect of placing our envy and then again opening us to pride because again, we're saying, I deserve this too. And um, social media allows us to not only connect, but it can quickly turn south. Um, and so these are about five little recommendations that I have for us, especially in the youth and the young adults is uh, limit your time on social media, right? A lot of us have our cell phones that's in my pocket right now. I look at it when I get a text message and I'm like, oh, I need to react, right? I need to respond. And it's not always beneficial to do that. So spend some time away from your cell phone, your, de your devices, and just enjoy what's in front of you. Your family, your kids, the wind, the sun, um, maybe even the cold, right? Just go outside to take a walk. Uh, and kind of detach from that social media platform. And then when you're on it, so this is uh, recommendation number two, is that when you are in uh, your account and you're looking at all of your friends and everything that they're doing, right? When you get to a picture that is starting to trigger pride or envy or jealousy or resentment, smile. Just do a simple smile. Right? There's a, an incredible effect that a smile does to your body. Um, a lot of people think that your emotions kind of run your body. Well, sometimes our bodies can run our emotions too. And so simply smile and you'll see quickly how your, your feelings are going to start changing immediately. It's an, almost an immediate effect. Yeah. So smile at that individual, smile at the incredible blessing that they receive. And that's kind of the, the third challenge is when you see that, Offer gratitude for them. Thank you, Lord, for blessing them with that house, 
for that job, um, for that child, whatever it may be. Just give them thanks. Give the Lord thanks that he's blessed them. And then you can add on like, I can't wait until you bless me, right? Um, because the Lord loves us so profoundly, so deeply, so uniquely that he has planned everything for us for our good. And we often forget that, right? And he calls us to forget our blessings. And um, that's a, the, the third challenge. The fourth challenge is then what can I do? What's the next good thing I can do? Whether that's leaving a comment like, hey, Rachel, you look like you're having fun. Continue to have fun. God bless. Right? Return safely. Right? Or congratulations on the new job. Right? Those small little things that are getting you to acknowledge the fact that, yes, you may be prideful, but you're not going to let it overrun your life. You're not going to fall into that trap. And so now you're enacting humility is that you're being happy for others. Right? And uh, then the last one is it's a sacramental challenge. Go to confession often. The sacrament of confession, when you go, when you walk into that confessional, though we may be petrified of what we want to share, right? We are humbling ourselves before our Lord because we're acknowledging the fact that number one, we've made a mistake. But it's also an gracious and a, a generosity that's being acted from our loving, loving father where he's pouring on us his son's blood washing us clean white as snow and bringing us back to life piecing us back together and is so excited to have us there even though we're fallen for him to accept our apology and make us better make us like saint michael to make us like his uh, chosen mary Right? And those are the challenges. There's five um, that I, I recommend for us to all participate in whenever we find ourselves falling into the traps of pride and envy. Yeah, I myself, I am looking forward to this challenge, especially so many times, you know, we see something and we immediately, like you said, it just resonates, it stirs something deep within us. And whenever we change our thinking, that's when we have the power to change the world. That's when we have the power to go out and to spread the truth of the Gospels, which is love and mercy itself. And so I hope that you will do this challenge, and I can't wait to see how the world changes because of what you are doing. For more videos like this, subscribe to Today's Catholic Newspaper on YouTube. And for notifications of when our latest episodes of Veritas are coming up, Hit the notification button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and God bless.